This program is brought to you by Resonance 104.4 FM. If you like what you hear and want to support our work, please make a donation at fundraiser.resonance.fm. Resonance 104.4 FM needs your help. We are London's only non-profit community arts station and we rely on the support of our listeners to stay on the air. Without your backing, we could not broadcast the wide range of shows that makes resonance. You can donate to Resonance by cheque, debit or credit card, cash, bank transfer or via PayPal. For more information, please visit resonancefm.com. Agents. I'm Jude Carol Montague. Hello, and I'm joined in the studio today by Judy Dybel. Hello. Hello, singer songwriter, formerly with Fairport Convention. And well, you're, we're going to be talking about your singer songwriting, what you've been doing, um, what you've been doing recently, what you've done in the past, and all kinds of things. You've come here today from Oxfordshire. Indeed, I have, yes. Yes, in the rain. <laughs> It is very rainy, and you have a lovely new greyhound. I do, yes, and it's the first time I've left her alone for more than an hour, so I'm hoping my house will still be in one piece when I get back. <laughs> yes, Jessie, we just listened to Mummy's voice over the air <laughs> and calm She'd down. She'd better not have turned the radio on. <laughs> very clever dogs. Yes. And first, I want to start with a different piece of music, actually. I want to start with something that has been recorded recently in a certain shed in south-east London in Mottingham, where there is a little Hammond organ that lives in a cabin in a back garden. And this is from some work in progress done with Matt Armstrong. And this piece is called 1466. Thank you. 
That was 1466 recorded in our shed with our Hammond organ by Matt Armstrong and myself. And my guest today is Judy Dybel and she has a, a great new album out, Summer Dancing. Indeed I do, yes, with Andy Lewis. Um, <clears throat> splendid, it's been out for a few months now but it's the people are still enjoying listening to it and finding it, so hooray! <laughs> yes, hooray, so it's 2017. Yeah. yeah. And um, Andy Lewis, he's he's playing guitar. What, tell me a bit about Andy. <laughs> Andy is a, an extraordinary producer. He's a DJ and um, a bass player. Um, he was with Paul Weller for about eight years as his bass player. Um, but he he works with lots of other bands in in London. Um, um, has his own radio thing on Soho Radio, I think, which is quite entertaining. He's very. Uh, just trying to think who 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 he kind of came to fame with. It was to do with the Britpop thing. I think Blur. Ah, he's from that thing. stable of musicians. So that very lot. important for British music. A lot of um, musicians who are really active and who are producers now yeah. are connected to that scene. That's right. Kind of when I th- when I wasn't listening, so I know nothing about them. Oops. <laughs> mm. And um, you've also written about being a musician yourself. Yes, I've, I've written written my autobiography which is basically i don't know how i got here but here i am how did you get here by saying yes to everything oh that's good hoping that it all worked out and so far so good touches wood touches plastic (laughs) but you've called it an accidental musician but was it really an accident getting into music or was it something that you always wanted to do and then you just just went with the flow no I, 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 you know, I had piano lessons when I was uh, little um, and um, began to sing with various people. I uh, never thought it would be a career. I was intending to be a librarian, um, but I met up with um, the beginning bits of Fairport and uh, ended up being their singer because none of them wanted to sing. So I was the closest person that could sing and had an auto harp. So that was odd. Yeah, it was different. But how did you meet up with them? Was it um, just people you knew through school or, or um, um, where you lived? Or was it well, through Well, it was sort of because interest? we used to go to pubs, me and my sister. Uh, to you know, the, the local pub would have a folk club one night and then a blues club another night. Um, <clears throat> so we were, we were all soaking up lots of different kinds of music so and Ashley and Simon and Richard were also going to these places so we kind of kept seeing each other and said hello ha and listening to music together and I did it just you know we just became friends so you're a listener who became a listener to live music the yeah. sort of yeah. segued that's but a also good word because I was working at the library <laughs> yeah. of course I had a free reign of the record library there so I could take stuff home I think, well, it, that is certainly a tribute, isn't it, to live music, live venues, yeah. uh, pubs having bands in them and so forth, and yeah. also a tribute to libraries where you can borrow music, although um, more is available on the internet now, so people yeah. can yeah. can but listen they, they, directly they, like they that. They still but. do um, have uh, CDs and DVDs and things like that. Mm. At least they did when I was working there. <laughs> they may have stopped it now. <laughs> and you live in Oxfordshire now? I do, yes. I moved out of London in uh, 1973, moved to Northamptonshire for three years and then back to Ox- and then to Oxfordshire where we were going to stay for a minute or two and that was 40 years ago. So <laughs> I kind of had put down a few roots in this little village, uh, which is quite nice. Yes. Did you always want to live in a village or was going to a village? Because right? you're from London, is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, when we moved out of London, me and my husband, we thought, oh, this would be quite fun. We'll, you know, get it together in the country. <coughs> and mm. then we found that we quite liked being out in the country and uh, didn't, re- didn't really want to go back to London. Although if we'd bought the house, the flat that we'd lived in, in Elgin Crescent, in Notting Hill... In You'd be very, very rich We'd indeed, very, very and far rich. too rich to come on Resonance <laughs> FM, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you? but you know, Oxford is really it's really lovely villages around yeah. there. I know that myself, so I can understand how you were seduced by it. But a lot of people do have the pastoral dream. It's something really in British yeah. consciousness, or they do. Of, yes, it's yeah. it's it's not that um, it's a dream rather than reality. The reality of living in a village is that you know it snows and you can't 
get out of the village. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the buses stop at seven o'clock on a Saturday night and you're not, you can't go anywhere till Monday. That's if you're reliant on, on buses. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and all the little, little places where the little treasures used to live that you would get to clean your house no longer can afford to live in those little houses. So they're, um, you know, they're not available to come and clean your house. <laughs> so, you know, this dream of escape to the country, is, it's, it's, uh, it's not all that it's cracked up to be, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I follow you on Facebook, as do many other people, <laughs> and I'm always intrigued and amused by your uh, small adventures, <laughs> your day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Um, well, luckily with I live opposite a tiny little wood, so the dog needs walking, so we just set off rain or shine, because you have to, for the dog, you have to take them out. And, um, uh, you know, it's just, just what I see on the way, and who I meet, and it's, just, I, it's wittering. I mean, I just witter. <laughs> but I can see how good you are as a writer because you have these little details of your day that are so amusing, and, and little slapstick details. I'm such a sucker for sort of natural <laughs> slapstick, you know, pulling down a branch and all the rain falls yeah. on you. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. You know, this you can't go for a walk in the countryside without getting muddy. Mud. Mud. My my life is full of mud. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that that pastoral thing um, has been something with the songs? Because you're, you're a lyric writer, aren't you? You've, I do, yes. You yes. write the words. Um, well, the interesting thing is that if I've, if I've come up with a, a, a set of words, um, if, I, if I can remember them by the time I've walked around the wood with the dogs, then it's a goer. If I can't remember what I've written by the time I get back again, then, you know, those words have just disappeared into the ether. They'll come back another day. Um, I tr yeah, I try not to be too pastoral and, and you know, over-lyrical. I, I do try to make something that, that will catch people's attention or, or will resonate with them resonate yeah no resonate is the best good word because we are on resonance fm and actually while i mentioned that name resonance fm may i direct everybody's interest <laughs> towards the fundraiser because this is the start of fundraising week and we have many events and you, you can find out about them on online um, a couple of them at the eclectic which is an organization we often do work with i shall just mention the one at the eclectic if i can find it with the honey hars who are the youngest band to be signed to Rough Trade recently and are the daughters of old friends of mine. Um, yes. In fact, Matt Armstrong from earlier used to live with their dad in a flat in Brixton once upon a time. So the they are at an all-star Avant Gala evening at the Eclectic on Wednesday, February the 7th, 7.30pm start and you can get tickets online or but probably you'll be able to turn up, I, I imagine. But I, I'll just check that out. So, yes, well, we, were, we were walking around the countryside getting our feet muddy. Well, the thing I like about living in Oxfordshire is, that, A, we moved there when it, when it was really quite cheap. <laughs> and it isn't now. But I can get almost everywhere from Oxfordshire. You know, they've got good trains, got good motorways so although you're outside you're not um isolated in no. that way or you're not out of the network and you're quite near oxford itself which yeah, is yeah, somewhere yeah, i know about, about quite nine miles from oxford which is quite nice i'm very close to bista village which you may have heard of the great Ooh. shopping outlet which is full of no people. i haven't is it worth going <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well it depends well, if, if you, you want, want to shopping. buy a designer yeah. handbag that's reduced from seven thousand pounds to three and a half Oh, right. OK. Yeah, I'll be straight <laughs> off there after the show. Which is um, not for me. <laughs> yeah. And I want to just say, um, looking at the CD, Summer Dancing, just to come back to that, that um, we miss beautiful Betty Blue, the greyhound, who inspired I it. Know. But yes, yes. Uh, sadly, she had to be put to sleep um, in October. Uh, she developed a tumour, but, you know, I take the older greyhounds and I don't know how long I'm going to have them for. She was with me for three years and everybody adored her. And 
lots of people took photographs, so there she is all over everything. <laughs> it's a very bold thing to do, actually, to take the old greyhounds. I mean, we, we have family connections with this because my boyfriend, he, his family had their East yeah. Enders and they had greyhounds. They had one called Maisie, who was named after his niece, who ran. And <laughs> I don't know whether how much Maisie actually won, but they, they would have the running greyhound and then afterwards the greyhound would retire yeah. and live with them. But you've yeah. gone straight to and, and, and got the the same kind of uh, dogs had the same kind of experience yeah well um mainly because i I never know exactly what uh, experience they've had some some i've known have been racers and and then you're very aware that they're likely to um take off and once they've taken off you can't stop them (laughs) um but some like betty she was just dumped um and the dog warden the local dog warden said you've got to have this one because he knew I hadn't got a a dog at the time and she's just absolutely adorable but a lot of them have really rotten teeth so they have to they they all end up being toothless wonders they've got (laughs) Jessie Jessie's only got four teeth Oh, well, yes, that's Jessie, the, the recent greyhound, who I believe you were saying is a little younger than the yeah, usual. Yeah, she's only seven and a half, as mm. opposed to the ten-year-olds that I quite often have. But, you know, they're, they're, all, they're all the same but different. So they've all got some characteristics which are the same. You know, you have to be aware that if something rushes straight past their eyes, they will chase it. Um, but they also they also lay on the couch and just chill out for the most of the day um people think that they they need a huge amount of walks and they don't two 20 minute walks and that's it they go ah i can't anymore let me just go to sleep Um, and they're big softies they are big softies (laughs) yes (laughs) yeah um but they know they all have their different characters i'm just learning about jesse at the moment (laughs) Yes, and we're going to play a song in a moment from your album, Summer Dancing. But I I was just asking you beforehand if you wrote songs about your animals. Uh, Well, I have written one or two. Um, uh, Not that many, though. I mean, I've got a whole song about the life of a greyhound, but it seems to be going on for about 18 verses, so I might have to cut it down. Well, that sounds great. No, no, (laughs) have a really long one. That would be good. I'd like that. (laughs) <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'll have to see if I can find someone to put some music to it. And you were saying about a song, Black Cat, or black, about a black, black dog. Yes, it's called Black Dog Dreams. It's on my Flow and Change album. And that was basically because um, black dogs, black cats, find it the hardest to be rehomed. I don't know, because you know, people think, ooh, black, ooh, you know, ooh, depression, ooh. And, and so Black Dog Dreams was kind of uh, a celebration of the black dog you know because um in in myths and literature and things you know black shuck and you know the, the evil dog who appears out yes of um, mythical but they just association you, this is basically i will be i will sit next to you i will listen to your hopes i will listen to your dreams and i and i, I won't oh. mind you crying on me <laughs> but, yeah just in you know, animals are a, an animal is an animal it doesn't matter what color fur it has <laughs> No, and apparently with the internet generation, with the people taking a lot of selfies as well, yeah. they say that the term black animals don't photograph as easily um, to get to the cute look that you want. Yeah. But this, I think this, they look gorgeous. This is true. I mean, you have to take... A be- uh, Jessie is, is, is almost completely black. Um, and the only... She only really looks good in the sunshine when but you can see her shininess mm. of her blackness. But um, but the silhouettes look amazing. I oh, mean, when are. when you see yes. them, they're so um, telling because animals have got such great expression through their yes. bodies, like yes. we don't have. Yeah. So I think actually, black cats and black dogs look yeah. great in photographs for that. Yes. Yeah. You just need to have them uh, on a contrasting colour. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, there's no point in photographing a white cat on a on a white blanket because it's all you do with the eyes <laughs> <laughs> right we're going to hear now I think Summer Dancing which is the title track from the album that came out last year with Andy Lewis yes.
were just having a big conversation then because as I was getting quite passionate about this relationship between folk music and the idea of the singer-songwriter and, and the songwriter or musician who does things themselves, records their own music and who yeah. works a bit outside the corporate um, yeah, industry. So, well, we were, we were saying there's an awful lot of uh, singer-songwriters now who, because they play with um, an, you know, an acoustic guitar or you know a fiddle or whatever, they're kind of lumbered as being folk. And, and the, the beauty of their music is that it's, it's, it's normally they've composed it. They're not singing the traditional folk songs. And there's 25 verse things that never changes key ever. Oh, <laughs> 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 that did I? <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're writing their own music, and it's it's beautiful. But they kind of get lumbered with this folk tag. Um, I mean, even people like Ed Sheeran, because he stands on stage, you know, with the guitar. The, the perception is folk. Plus, he's got moustache, and some of them have got beards and that sort of stuff. So the mm. people tend to pigeonhole musicians, whereas I think in the late 60s and 70s, you could be a singer-songwriter. You could sing your own songs, and it was it was an accepted genre. And then suddenly that became, you know, phew, how naff is that? Let's, let's go punk and all the rest of it, which is when I stopped listening. <laughs> yeah, I think there's something about people when they record music themselves and play themselves, that people want to lump that kind of working with musical ideas with folk yeah it's it's like you're not allowed to play a song just yourself without using loads of production uh, techniques you know if you do anything with simple performance and production you're either classical or folk for some reason yes. this seems to be how categorizing has gone yeah i think that, that that's kind of what it is um people do like to put people into genres um it's the same and, with prog. I mean, mm. the stuff is classed as prog and, and it's it's not really. It's a mixture of everything. Because you're not a traditional folk singer. Nope, not me. Even though you are often associated with that because of yeah. the people you've played with, obviously because of your early relationship with or your, your early appearances with Fairport yeah. and because of the time and the musicians that, yeah. that you've come out of, people think Judy Dival must be a folk musician. Yes. Well, not really. I'm not really. Um, I mean, I, when I was, you know, fourteen, fifteen, I was singing the same folk songs that everybody else was singing because that was what you did. But um, and when I joined Fairport, we were very much a rock band. <laughs> you know, it was kind of the folk rock of of American stuff and and singer songwriters from America that we were whose music we were using. We were um, arranging it to suit the band that we were in so it was not like not like the original singer songwriter like the Joni Mitchell track for, uh, Chelsea Morning for instance that was just a simple simple you know guitar based song uh, and then we got hold of it and did all sorts of other stuff to it and that was the that was the joy of being in Fairport that you know we'd, we'd take a song and we'd make it a Fairport song <laughs> um uh, so they weren't covers; they were, they were our versions. <laughs> yeah, sometimes people use the word reimaginings these days. That's yeah. become a very trendy way of saying you're doing a version with putting a lot of your own yeah. uh, take onto things, bringing where you are in it. What do you think? We've got the I've got brought in my huge book today, Electric Eden, very famous book for um, which is repackaged really the uh, psychedelia and the folk tradition yeah. and the folk revival in the sixties and seventies and. Uh, bit earlier a bit later for uh, for a younger a special not for well for everybody but yeah. particularly for people who weren't around at the time somebody like yourself has got your own references because you've lived it yes you know yeah. but but um <laughs> for those of us who haven't lived lived it or um, uh, um, maybe i touched upon the edges but the um the very younger generation who haven't um who who weren't there but who were still entranced by a lot of the experimentation of this period that this book electric eden has repackaged it and a very meaty tome it is with dates yes. and names yes, and it's, so it's, forth it's a, it's a very it's a, a, a full full-on book that you that I, I kind of dip into and, and now and again and have a look and think, yes, okay, that's enough. 
can't case it. No more can fit in my head at this moment. <laughs> it, it is very full of facts and it's also, also so philosophy. I, mm. I, I, I wonder whether it's it's just too wide ranging because it's it's not only um, British folk; it's sort of other countries, and there's there's just too much to really fit in it. Too much to fit in a brain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But that's what books are for, aren't they? That's, they're useful things. Anyway, I, w- I was just interested with the Fairport link because of you saying about the band doing, uh, changing things and making them fit in the rock context. Because obviously he's been very careful to call it Electric Eden and he's got the pylon on the field. So it isn't just the, uh, the horses drawing the plough across the yeah. furrowed field. It's, it's got a pylon. It's electrical folk. Yeah. It's, he um, is very clear about that. Yeah. Yes, no, it's, it's, it's a fabulous book. Mm. And I have a copy, which I read every now and again, but I can't hold it open for very long. Yeah, and <laughs> it's, it's it's also interesting this this relationship of technology mm. and music because we're in a period where it's, yes. it's all it's all um, sort of intertwined, isn't it? How you record things, and it, it can be quite a minefield, really. The choices that you have to make. Yeah. What What do you have any thoughts on? Uh, I don't even no. try. Ah. I, other, other people do it for me because uh, I just get I just get a muddle. <laughs> do you have any preference, like for listening? Do you have um, uh, um, music from a particular period or? Uh, no, I listen to all sorts of stuff. Um, I think my favourite kind of music that I would listen to to relax doesn't happen often is is jazz. Um, that's interesting uh, occasionally classical but basically because when my husband died he left me this huge vinyl record collection and CD collection and I look at it and think what shall I listen to I can't decide so I don't listen to anything (laughs) which is a bit sad really Um, but um, I I very rarely listen to any music when I'm writing stuff of my own and why is that? Um, well I I (laughs) desperately don't want to plagiarise something from anybody else. Uh, plus, I find it annoying because, you know, thinking, well, that's really good, yes, yes, but I want to get one my, what's in my head. Um, so it's, it's quite a selfish thing, being a writer. Yeah, but it is, yes, it is. And I think that's actually good for people to hear because sometimes you think one thinks one has to know so much and I've heard so much to have a voice of your own be valid, but actually that isn't really true yeah. if you're a writer you need to to write yes um i i i don't consider myself to be a very good writer i just write what comes into my head and see if i can make it rhyme with something else um <laughs> i have been told that i keep i just never write waltzes <laughs> but that's the rhythm that fits in but then <clears throat> somebody like andy will come along and take the words and turn them into Whatever rhythm he's got in his head, like that summer dancing, uh, started off as quite a simple set of words, and now it's well, it's it's all over the place. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's really complex, it. isn't it? Now yeah. or multi-layered. I think that um, it's really interesting to, uh, to write with other people because oh, yes. Yes. music. One of the things about music is that it can be such a great collaborative yeah. venture. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't tend to write the music. Uh, I've written one, one song with, with, you know, the whole thing, words and music, but it's very rare. Do you write tunes, though, as you write? No. Or just, just no. purely I just, lyrics? I just write lyrics. Or, unless somebody's given me some, some loops to work to, or, you know, a tune that needs a... a or, it doesn't necessarily have to be a tune. It can be a set of just music, and, and somewhere in there I will find the words... There'll be a hook that I can get hold of and I'll write the words or I'll I'll look up a set of words that I've written some while ago and filed away and see if I can make them fit by rewriting, rejigging. And and when do you write? Do you you write stories? How how do you feel about storytelling or do do you sort of tell a little moment or is it or a feeling or are you interested in narrative? It is. uh, Some some songs are narratives. some some are, are whole stories from start to beginning. Some are just you know the, the feeling of the moment. 
Um, you know, it's. I'm looking out of the window. The, the crystals on the crystal tree are sparkling in the sun, and there's all these little birds flitting around. So that's newborn creatures. You know, and it's. Um, so you've got an association there from yeah. the visual stimulus. Yeah. Some, that's something will very something poet- will set, poetical set off yeah. in my head, um, and then some words will come tumbling out. And and if they come out in a great heap, uh, and I'm satisfied with them, then that is finished. If I reread them a bit or uh, reread them later and, and I'm not happy, then I'll just rejig them because I know I know what I want to say within a song. Um, but I don't know how I do it. <laughs> yeah. Do you think simplicity, I mean, not just for yourself, but for other people, having this kind of simple, straightforward approach is something that perhaps we need to appreciate more? Yeah. Um I don't know. I I I I hesitate to say how I how how anybody else would write. Mm. I only know how I do it, and I don't even know how I do it. So it's not much help, really, yeah. is it? <laughs> well, I'll say it then. You see, I say that I think I think a sort of really simple approach is something we should appreciate more because uh, I'm I'm a poet, and I see a lot of people yeah. being very complex and trying to overcomplicate things, which is, in my opinion, I'm not saying that you can't be complicated and. I don't, I don't want to say anything yeah. about that, but I want to just say about the value of being kind of very simple, not going in and editing a million times or or being too, uh, thinking that you have to sort of chew everything yeah. over like a dog no, to a bone. Sometimes it's very beautiful to be quite straightforward <laughs> and if it doesn't work, chuck it away and, and do another one, do another one. I think, yeah. um, which you will do if you're a compulsive <laughs> writer anyway, you know, yeah, look at it Um critically in the sense of look at it and see how you feel about it and, and read well, other I, people's I know, work. I know but when don't something's finished. Yeah. This isn't that's exactly right, isn't it? I think there's there's yeah. forces at work inside ourselves that are not necessarily always the conscious part of our brain and one of the songs I wrote, uh which I've got here, uh is called A Rainbow Trapped in Glass and that came about because I think scientists have managed to actually trap a rainbow inside a piece of glass. How have they done that, though? They have, and I don't know how they did it. But it's all explained on the internet, and it's a beautiful picture of a, a rainbow trapped inside a piece of glass. And that, that, that was the beginning of a song, which um, I will sing for you, if you like. Oh, yes, please, please, please. I love <laughs> so live singing. I'll sing something right if you thing. do. Yeah. Right. Have you this got- is called A Rainbow Trapped in Glass. I found a rainbow trapped in glass It moved in tangles trying to be free It tried to make its feelings known And wished to talk to me I found the catch that opened up The glass and let the rainbow free It whirled, became the smallest dragon With jeweled eyes to see I watched it as it flew away. I hoped that it would find other little dragons soon, more of its own kind. And there might be a flame of swooping jewels in the night, a glittering, a sparkling of these dragons in their flight. And they may take their glory far beyond the morning story. Leaving trails of rainbows in my crystals bright. That's so beautiful. I want to cry. <laughs> I actually got little tears in my eyes. I don't know. That's quite rare for me. I don't, normally, the, the I'm just really bullshit. It was written by Alistair Murphy, who writes, co-writes an awful lot of my songs. So he came up with that, that tune and... And the way you sung it, actually, I just love the way you went to the <laughs> bottom bit of your voice and the bit higher. It's really touching. I was lucky I started off on a note that I could actually sing it all with. Like, Perfectly. Good. It's really great. I'm so thrilled. I actually, then I am going to say, I want to sing this song with you as well. The one about, um, we say, after saying we're not doing folk music, do you no, think no, we no. can have a go <laughs> at singing a, a folk song? That we could. I, I think I might have a different a tune to you. <laughs> Because I didn't find the... But but that'll be fine. Maybe we can just whisper around each other. While I'm still confident, maybe we... Could we just jump in and have a go? (laughs) Great. Oh, what, come all you fair? Yeah. Um, Yes. Gosh, Mm. she's such a wimp, this woman. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, who, who is what? The, who's the wimp? The, 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 wimp the, wom- the woman who's singing all this, this. It's called Come All Ye Fair and Tender Ladies. Yeah, do you think she's kind of one of these n- sort of bossy women who no. pokes her nose in with no? no. Oh, she always wants to be a little sparrow. Yeah, yes, she's, she's been bossy. deserted and you don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, we're, we're, so we're wimpish <laughs> women. I don't know quite how we're going to sing this together. No, I've no idea. Uh, you start and I'll just join in. <laughs> Come all ye fair, fair and tender ladies. Take warning how you caught your men. They're like the stars on the summer morning. First they appear and then they're gone. If I had known before I courted, I never would have courted none. I'd have locked my heart in a box of golden and fastened it up with a silver pin. I wish I were some little sparrow (laughs) and I had wings and I could fly. I'd fly away to my false true lover and when he'd speak I would deny. But I am not some little sparrow. I have no wings, neither can I fly. So I'll sit here to weep in sorrow and try to pass my troubles by. Do Do you remember remember when when we courted, courted, when when your your head lay on my breast? You could could make make me believe believe by the falling of your arms that the sun rose in the west. Come all ye fair and tender ladies, take warning how you caught your men. They're like the stars in the summer morning. First they appear, and then they're gone. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Ilya, and thank you, Isa, for um, applauding and engineering. <laughs> it's a silly song. I mean, it's probably a mixture of about 16 different versions, and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. one I dragged together years ago <laughs> yeah and they're all cobbled together all yeah. different do you know what i think you're very wise about the singer songwriting because i get annoyed with like yourself with the characters that you're supposed to be if you do traditional folk yeah. music it's put me off i must say singing too much folk music which i like folk music yeah. and I, i'm interested in it but i, I often don't want to sing those characters no. and, uh, <laughs> because why, why should i want to sing something that i don't really believe well, you know, you're singing the song and you think, oh, for goodness sake, get it together, madam. You know, just, just you know, forget it. <laughs> but, uh, oops. And then the next one is the same one. Oh, no, still hasn't got it together, <laughs> yes, you know. That's right. Will you sit, will you stop it? You know, get up, go and, you know, get a job somewhere. Mm. <laughs> yeah, ab- well, I absolutely agree because I was brought up to be a sort of self-motivated um, Somebody, you know, my yeah. mother didn't encourage me to sit around moping. <laughs> oh, I wasn't. I was just uh, allowed to to grow up to kind of do what we wanted. Me and my sisters and my brother. Uh, so I just got all. I just because I was the third, the third daughter. Uh, my eldest sister had the hustle of, you know, I want to wear high heels. I want to wear makeup. No, you can't. Yes, you can. By the time it got to me, they'd given up. You know, so. I was borrowing everybody's makeup and wearing, wearing high heels and unsuitable clothes. <laughs> and also, you're a Londoner, you know, it's very yeah. exotic to me from Bolton and Manchester, <laughs> you know, um, place of wild sin and parties. Yeah. And um, London and is just a, a whole heap of villages. I yeah, mean, it really is, and it was very much so in those days. But you could get on a bus and you go and find out what was at the end of the line. 
This is something that resonates with what my uh, boyfriend says, being a Londoner himself yeah. from the East. He'd get on the bus and you'd go into town and then just sort of yeah. get off and then there'd be these clubs and yeah. of our different generations' clubs where they're all listening to punk music, I suppose. <laughs> but you, yeah, but the same thing. Is it Bungie's was the famous club? Yeah, that down. was one of the famous um, uh, coffee bars, coffee bar, folk clubs, yes down the rickety stairs <laughs> i think i went there a couple of times i can't remember who i heard or what i did yeah but uh i can't remember anything these days i'm too old i don't i don't have any memory mm. but there were quite a lot of venues <laughs> where people were going yeah. to play their own music and you weren't just fed some corporate uh, no most i mean everywhere um restaurants wanted singers restaurant wanted you know musicians playing um now I don't know. I'm quite glad that they've they've done this thing where um if you buy if you if you start building a house or, or in a block of flats near somewhere that's been an iconic music venue, you cannot complain because there's music. <laughs> I don't know quite quite why people would want to move to an area because it was, you know, jumping and grooving and everything and then want to take away the thing that made it the area you wanted to live in. I'm going to go further. I think that the government and the states and the councils in particular should be forced to allocate areas for um, cooperative musical and artistic adventures, yeah. maybe particularly for music and for sound making and for that kind of collaborative artistic ventures. There should be like protected areas of the city. There should yeah. be protected areas of London where people are able to uh, create stuff. And it's not just a flip. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's if people want to do something creative, they're almost forced to consider going to university, which is now costing like absolutely tons of money. And then they're in some kind of system where they have to pass loads of exams and jump through hoops. <laughs> and so rather we should have um, we should have areas that are there forever for people to create with. Well, isn't that a good thing? In the place, in the, in, the, in the little bit of London that I grew up in, which is Wood Green, so that's North London, um, there was a, a sweet factory called Barrett's Sweet Factory, which you know we 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 knew when they were making licorice because there was a smell of burnt licorice. And it was, mm, yeah, but I believe you. that that whole area, um, you know, that 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 industrial site is now called something like the Chocolate Factory or something. I know the Chocolate Factory. Yes, and, yes, and it does have spaces for people to to you know create in. And and more power to the robot. And I think more pe mm. more places are beginning to do that. Yeah, we need more stuff like that. And and with venues and with um, you know places for people to be. And not all about money because. Um, well, if you think how much money the music business brings into the country, why would they want to stamp it out? I know. <laughs> why, and why would they not want to encourage people to begin to do the music that that can. You know, in, in monetary terms, can bring in a huge amount of income to the country. I know, and it makes your life so much better uh, that people would want to live near places w yeah. where music is being made. Maybe they don't want to hear it through their floor at three o'clock in the morning, some heavy <laughs> drum beats, but we're not talking about that. We're talking yeah. about sort of live, creative, um, yeah. maybe what has been considered folk, but it isn't. <laughs> I want to read a poem actually now. Oh, let's look at the time. It's a quarter of an hour to go. Yeah, um, for the Montague Arms, which has shut down, which is a pretty iconic pub that we've just lost in, ooh, what would you call that area? Sort of near New Cross Gate. And I just put together a few words from what people had said on a Facebook, actually, about, the, about being there and about the... It had great um, memorabilia all around the pub, great stuff uh, great, great things, stuffed animals. I'm sorry, animals, but you know it was very evocative mm -hmm. and uh, from a generation, and they hadn't killed the animals themselves and stuffed them. And I just got hold of them uh, um, from the equivalent of eBay. We miss you already, Montague. On penny desk, we hunted only the audience. Stag's mask, the carriage stuffed full of board games. What was that? Squares and farthings, diving coach. Can you record it? They'd never leave us alone here. Braces of eyebrows, drinking in a corset, grey skin, stuffed head, singing with flags. Don't embarrass the students. Wrinkles of purple, propeller crocodile, fluttering round the boar's head. 
Happy eyelids, neon bare beginnings. Drake's globe spins. They were ready for us. This is the Montague Arms. We fell off stage onto a fox in a party hat. Thin arms, frosty lager, copper boats, we loved it too much. I can't hear you, red Indian in army thins. Mother, is that you? Why? Don't ask me. Imperialist kitsch, amateur wicker debris and nautical pigeons, cannon stoked, water through Venetian mirrors, fairy heads. Aye, aye. The beauty of the night. Can I have a lemonade? Glasses and nose, 4.1%. Impala skull. Doors of switches, get in. Lift shut, door, lights, blue tongue wires, graffiti teeth, frog. Ukulele, dancing with jelly. The killers were everywhere. I can't begin anywhere else. Again, it's done. Off. That's little tribute to the Montague Arms that we loved very much mm. and we did all kinds of crazy uh, alternative things there and wore lots of wigs <laughs> as, as one does <laughs> mm. yeah and so do you, you you find it difficult to play with your the musicians you work with now because they're all in different places all around yes, the country yes I have well I have a band that I I, I um, use with my my own music that I've done I've, I've kind of ended up with, with doing lots of different music with lots of different people. Um, Andy Lewis, he has a set of musicians that I work with when he does it, but uh, my own band, the band of Perfect Strangers, they called themselves, of course, because that's a kind of a, 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 a movable band, depending on who's available at the time. When the bass player, Mark, lives in Leeds. Um, Alistair and Jeremy and Fran, that's the keyboard player, the guitarist and the violinist, live in uh, Norfolk <clears throat> and the other keyboard player and, and the drummer live in, in Essex and I'm in Oxfordshire so we get together occasionally <laughs> to do mm. rehearsals they do little rehearsals of their own um, so they know what we're doing they're actually all coming to me tomorrow so I've got to sort out some lunch ah oh, fun <laughs> guests they're, they're actually they're coming to meet the dog <laughs> of <I'm> course <laughs> um, so yeah, so actually doing live gigs is quite complicated because they all have day jobs and things, so I have to work around when... And other projects, because musicians often doing lots of different collaborative yeah. projects if they're serious yes. about about it and they have the time. Yeah. They fill it up, don't yes. they? Yes, so <laughs> I, know I send, I send around an email saying, uh, I've got somebody wants us to do this, are you free? And some will say yes and some will say no. So depending on who's free... Is, is how big the band is. Have you got any gigs coming up this year, like in festivals, for example? Uh, no festivals, you're... no, but I'm I'm doing quite an interesting one with, with my band of Perfect Strangers, but it's also with Jim McCarty from um, the Yardbirds. Oh, wow. The Renaissance. What um, a name <coughs> he's, from he's the past, a book, hey? Uh, an autobiography with um, the man who helped me write mine. And he's launch, doing a book launch at Eel Pie... Uh, Eel Pie at the Patch, I think it's called, in Twickenham. It's on the 5th of April. On the island is... Well, it's not, it's on, the not on the island anymore, because I don't think you can do stuff on the island. Yeah, something... I remember it's <coughs> changed. I'm not a West Londoner, so I only hear no. this um, rumours so, floating through London. So he, he asked me if I'd like to do do a, a gig with him, and, and we'll, I'll, he'll sing one of the songs I do, and I'll sing a couple of his songs. So. That's really an interesting... Um, yeah, uh, it's going to be fun. A ...pair of um, people <laughs> from the past talking and sharing yes. stuff about... Someone about else the... I've never met in real life that I'm going to be singing with. Oh. But, you know, why not? It works quite well. So Jim McCarty. So what, when is that? Do you've got That's a date? That's on the 5th of April. 5th of April. A couple of days later, I'm doing something in Sheffield, a little tiny theatre there. Um, mm. But I, uh, one up, of the most interesting north. things I've done in the last year or so is um, singing with um, Big Big Train. Yes, they were doing incredibly work. well now, aren't They're they? They're brilliant. They're wonderful musicians. Uh, well, I, I never work with anybody who's not a good musician, obviously. <laughs> um. Well, I'm sure they're really delighted to work with you, but they are doing uh, really um, yeah. powerful it's music fabulous, and fabulous, fabulous stuff. Yes, and the and song, uh, song I sang with David was just brilliant. So that's big, big trade. Look out for them. 
Yeah, I think you can't miss them, actually, to be honest. No. They're, they're kind of powering <laughs> through the... Uh, they're they're yeah. considered folk. They're considered po- proggy folk. Proggy folk, yeah. Um, uh, yes. And they, they got in the folk awards and... Oh, no, no, no. They're prog- they, 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 they win they get prog to, awards. The, is it prog awards? Yes, prog yeah, awards, um, yes. They, they've won best mm, singer. I know best they've won. I know band. they've won stuff. Yeah. They're really good. And they're, they're all lovely people, so... And they write an awful lot of stuff about uh, narrative things about um, uh, people from the past or bits of bits of England, historical yeah, references and stuff. and a political stuff as well. I think yeah, a little um, bit as to do with that kind of um, radical English history. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, so uh, the yeah. agricultural yeah. traditions and yeah. so when when. Is it Win Stanton? Who's the guy who uh, the Levellers and um, oh, that yes. kind of st- that kind of story? I yeah. don't know if they've written actually yeah. about him. Main, mainly, I think mm. I think um, David is one of the one of the songwriters. David Longden, and his, his he writes about his family's connection to the mining in Nottinghamshire and how his uncle Uncle Jack, one of his sons. All about how his uncle Jack sort of spent his life down the mine, but on his days off he takes his dog walking in the countryside around, so and, and teaches teaches the young David about the hedgerows and all the plants that are growing there. <laughs> it's this interesting combination of like pastoral village yeah. life and history, but it doesn't have to be a life in which everybody's just lying around being yeah. shepherdesses. It's all yeah. connected to this working history. Right. They're yes. ploughing that field in a way and they write songs about trains and about swan hunter shipyards and all sorts of wonderful things if you can get to go and see them live which is rare but they will be doing i think more gigs next year good and you are you going to be with them for that do you think or um, Mm. Um, so you i'm afraid you've got another trip back up to oxfordshire at the end of the show yep and um you you're going to be reconnecting with with your well you're going back home to your village Yes, yes, yes. I am where my friend, where my neighbours have been walking my dog and feeding her, and <laughs> and I've seen on on Facebook. And I just wanted to ask you about this: your relationship with stuff. You're really quite a collector of um, intriguing and and um, um, well, uh, interesting always, objects. There's always something in a charity shop or in an antique shop or something or on a stall somewhere that is absolutely beautiful but has a little bit broken. And I can't resist them, you know, the things for a quick. Oh, you're looking after those poor little items yeah, and exactly. things, the social service yeah, I am, yes, for objects. Yes, yes. I don't mend them, I just, you know, bring them home. I don't need mending, maybe. But, you know, the weirder the better. And there's some very weird stuff out there, and I quite like it. Whereas, you see, I wanted to say this earlier. When when you sang your song about the trapped rainbow, it reminded me of that side of your character. How interested you were in objects, and also then it became the dragon. It was the, it was everything in a way. <laughs> it was everything I think about. It was kind of well, I don't mean this badly, but the junk shop kind of yeah. thing. The appreciation of the objects, the um, curiosity. And the object, and then the poor little dragon it, it, uh, <laughs> sort of <laughs> looked after the feeling of the, the, you know, and 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 you wanting to sort of look after the dragon yeah. creatures, and the empathising and and for the yeah, yes. for the animal of the dragon. Yes, that that song came quite quite easily. <laughs> to say it was quite quite easy to write mm. and uh, full of the kind of jeweledness uh, jewels yes. and and sparkling and the animal shapes because i've noticed that you're attracted as well to objects with animals yes yes, yes. mainly yes oh i don't know i just i mm. i have this this collective collecting thing my my house is impossible to move in and god knows what my children are going to do when i go because they'll have to sort them all out they'll love it they'll argue over all the stuff because yeah. everybody you know like i never liked my my mother's objects when she was alive but when she went i wanted them all and i've um, that's yeah, why i'm not them. going to do the clearing out the downsizing sort of throwing away stuff mm. because my children i don't know what my children will want they might not want any of it they might want all of it in which case they'll have to 
have big houses. <laughs> Well, I think it'd be great fun to sort through your stuff. I wouldn't mind coming through and having a little sort <laughs> myself. I wanted to give you something for your children then. Oh, well, but they probably won't want it. But I'll give you one of my little paintings. I do Aww. little paintings on word and um, nice? I thought of one for you because I just thought of like women singing together. It sort of had that sort of pastoral little yellow flowers yeah, and like open over. mouth. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so fall over. That's perfect, yeah. though, isn't it? A little bit of slapstick <laughs> yeah, in the corner. Yeah. Oh, that's really sweet. Oh. I shall treasure that. Hopefully it's not too heavy. No, it's fine. It's okay. That's, that's fine. I have to find a bag so I don't get it wet on the way home. It'll yeah. Be a bit wet there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for, for not rejecting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, um, why would I reject a gift? Well, you know what it's like when we're doing our little songs and things you know you offer it out to the world and you yeah. you never know how thi- I don't know there's that little moment of is this okay <laughs> yes no, it's it's well it's, you know, it's like when you t- I sing a song to someone you know I never know whether they're going to like it and and hopefully they won't wander off while I'm halfway through it <laughs> yeah it's a sort of something so personal and yeah intimate we let them free into the world and hope they find a place to sit. Absolutely. I think that's that's the thing about doing something that, I don't know, is so personal and, and mm. so sort of simple. It's, um, it, you never, it, it's, it's that interface between you and the audience and everything is quite delicate. Yes. Yeah. I think, well, we're nearly at the end. I was going to ask her for a song. If there's somebody listened to, uh, but we don't really have time to play a song. So maybe I'll just have to say thank you. It's been a pleasure, an utter pleasure. I hope you have a great journey back. And I will just, uh, this is the news agents, Resonance FM. I'm Jude Karen Montague. I just wanted to say, please do donate to Resonance FM. This is our big fundraiser week. And you can also go to one of the events and then you'll meet lots of other people who like Resonance FM too and maybe make a, a friend and support live music, which is all brilliant things to do. Resonance 104.4 FM needs your help. 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 We are London's only non-profit community arts station and we rely on the support of our listeners to stay on the air. Without your backing, we could not broadcast the wide range of shows that makes resonance. You can donate to Resonance by cheque, debit or credit card, cash, bank transfer or via PayPal. For more information, for more inf- please visit Resonance FM. This program has been brought to you by Resonance 104.4 FM. If you liked what you heard and want to support our work, please make a donation at fundraiser.resonance.fm. Resonance.fm. 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 Resonance